Hey everyone, welcome back to Brownlow Books. Um, we'll get right into it. I'm fucking lose my book here. <laughs> Alright, Mr. Malcolm's List by Suzanne, I want to say Elaine? Elaine? Yeah, I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> Alright, Mr. Malcolm's List. Um, the reason I picked it up is because I keep seeing trailers for the movie and it looks like it's getting kind of a like Bridgerton styles treatment with, you know, not white people and amazing costumes and sets. So, <laughs> uh, I thought, why the heck not? It's, you know, short. <laughs> As you know, I love a historical romance. I did not love this. <laughs> um, it's, uh, I can, I can get over period inaccurateness. Like, that's, that doesn't bother me at all. Just, there wasn't enough detail to any of it for me, I think is what the problem was. Uh, like, they go to balls, but they're not really described as anything other than, like, the ten minute conversation they have there. There's no description of the room, what they're wearing, what other people are wearing, what they're listening to. Like, it's, it wasn't enough detail for me. It was very, very light in that aspect. Um, and I mean, altogether, it is more of a light, fluffy kind of thing. Um, there's no sex scenes that are clean. Um, you know, it's a light, fluffy rom-com that happens to be set during the Regency. I think it was the Regency. Second-guessing myself now. We're gonna go with Regency. <laughs> um, the characters themselves, most of them are generally unlikable. Um, our main heroine is nice. Um, I don't like our hero. Just kind of at no point did I like, at no point did I swoon or anyone else swoon. All right. <laughs> um, he's generally unlikable and like I can get over that if there's like something near the end where it's like he does this and you're just like you melt. <laughs> I need a melt. I didn't get a melt. <laughs> You know? So there's that. Um, it also suffers a little bit from pacing issues. Um, I was about halfway through and I went, wait, this, this is already resolved? Like, what could possibly be happening in the second half of this book? And what's happening in the second half of this book is drag. <laughs> One big old drag. Uh, second half of the book just could have gone a lot faster, which is funny as I say this as a short book that I wanted to be longer. I wanted the second half to be shorter. <laughs> Drag out that first half for me, slash the second half a little bit. That's, that's what I would have wanted from this. Um, so yeah, overall, it was a nice, clean, fluffy read. It was nothing special. I'm kind of wondering how it got picked up to be a movie, to be honest. But if the movie can justify it and make it better, then I'm all fucking for it because I do love me a period romance. <laughs> um, that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, it does have 9,311 reviews on Goodreads, resulting in a 3.27 star. So when I looked at some of the reviews, it was like, I love it, I hate it, and then a whole bunch of like three stars. And I was like, that makes sense. This is a solid, respectable three-star book. <laughs> it's not respectable. I don't know. It's a solid three stars, though. I I fully agree with that. Um, I didn't hate reading it. I wasn't like, I gotta finish this immediately. I also read about two-thirds of it on the motherfucking beach in October in 12-degree weather. <laughs> It was enjoyable though. I wish I could read by the beach all the time, but that has nothing to do with the book, so we'll just get past that. Um, yeah, like I said, respectable, three stars, fully agree. If it's your kind of thing, you might like it. If it's not your kind of thing, I just stay away. Just don't even, don't even try. It's not, you know, it's not a great, you know, piece of literature that will go down for the ages. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's it. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you around next time.